All right, this is what God requires of us. Uh, he's not expecting anything else except to keep his commandments. All right. So from there, let's go to Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-one. Today's class is titled "If God Be For Us." All right, let's read that. Romans chapter eight and verse thirty-one. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So the scripture says, "If God be for us." Who can be against us? Alright? When is God for us, brothers? When we keeping his laws. Exactly. When we keeping his laws. That's something. Alright? You know what? Yeah, let's go to Proverbs 16, 7. But I want to pull something through the run. Let me find it real quick. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 16 and 7. And let's read that. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord. He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So the scripture says, when a man's ways uh, please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies, even his enemies be at peace with him. All right, one sec, one sec. All right, while you're looking for that, uh, brothers that brothers that were at camp today, y'all witnessed that. Uh, Esau came out there for about 50 minutes. All right, trying to, uh, y'all sisters don't know we're at camp. Usually we stand across the street from the bus station. But we went under the bus station because it's a little easier for us to teach. And they came out there, bringing scriptures out or whatnot. I guess somebody called and complained and they, they couldn't, they just stood out there, they kept walking back and forth. They couldn't say nothing because when we were just blameless in our speech, we stand in the scriptures, wasn't saying that nonsense. So eventually, after about an hour, they finally found something to say. It was like, uh, y'all in the way of uh, some blah, 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 whatever. But it was going to rain, and we had to go anyway. But the, the word went out. The word went out. So the most I always make sure you take care of. And I'll give you another example how when a man's ways please the Lord, uh, he make his enemies at ease. And when you look at Joseph, all right, Joseph was thrown into prison for a while, for a long time. But when he got out, the most I, the most I made his way a lot. He made, he made his enemies at ease. What happened to Joseph eventually? Who can tell me? Not you, more. I don't ask you before. What you got? He became one of the lords over Egypt. Right. He was second in place in Egypt. Second in Egypt. What about Daniel? Daniel, Daniel became uh, second in, 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 in Babylon. All right? And all of these were while we were in captivity. So it's nothing new for us to be taken care of while we're in captivity. Beautiful examples by the officer. All right. All right. So, yeah, let's read that again. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Even his enemies to be at peace with him. Because although uh, we know, uh, was that Job 9 24 says, the earth is given to the hands of the wicked, right? But who ultimately has the power of the world? The most high God. Let's go to that. Um, Sirach 10 4. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 4. Alright, because when it's all said and done, he controls, he controls it all. Alright, let's read that. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh-huh. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Read on. And in due time, mm -hmm. he will set over it one that is profitable. In due time. So right now, the Israelites, we're not profitable right now. All right? We got to get ourselves together. So what? All right, he let the other nations rule right now. Let's go to Romans 13. We was going over this at camp. Jump to the part that says, um, start, at, start at 3. Start at 3. Think this way. Romans chapter 13 and verse 3. Uh-huh. For rulers are not a terror to good works, Free. but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Start at, I'm sorry, start at 1. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. But there is no power but of God. All right, so we know that the Most High God set up Esau right now. Why? Because we just read in Sirach 10 and 4 is that he has the power over the world and he will set up one that is profitable in due time. So right now it's not our time. But we understand totally that the Most High God has control over everything. So he's using them to chastise us. Bishop McDaniel brought out a good point last week. 
The same laws that Esau has us following is biblical. It's the same thing. Because when we had our own kings, we had our own rulers enforcing the law, we didn't want to do it. So he said, all right, if you don't want to do it, all right, I'm going to make, I'm going to set up heathens and they're going to enforce the law and you still got to do it. And if you don't, he's going to put you to death. All right, let's read that all the way through. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. But there is no power but of God. Uh -huh. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. Read. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Read that part again. Do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. So he's showing you, even though he has your enemies ruling over you, he's saying, all right, keep his commandments and he'll take care of you. Y'all see that? So no matter what, the most high God, he still has his, his finger in the mix. He, he stirs it. He does all of it. He kills. He makes alive. He sets up nations. He brings down nations. All right? From there, let's go to um, Jeremiah 15 and 11. All right? So the clip, today's class is if God be forced. So we're going to go to some examples today. All right, to show when the Most High God was with our forefathers, even through um, hard times. Just read that. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 11. Uh -huh. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remedy. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil mm -hmm. and in the time of affliction. And in the time of affliction. All right, right now we're living in a time of affliction. Why? Because aren't our men, aren't our women, from all tribes getting gunned down unjust, unjustly? Is that even the word unjustly? Unjustly? Right. Our people are definitely being afflicted. Our people are at the bottom. But when it comes to the righteous, the Most High God is making a way for us. He's keeping us safe. Why? Because what? We chose to keep His commandments. We chose to do what's good. Uh, read on. I'm sorry, read that again. Isaiah, I mean Jeremiah, chapter 15 and verse 11. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remedy. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. And in the time of affliction. All right, this is, that went for our forefathers as well. We're going to read some examples. And it uh, carries all the way until today. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 65 and start at verse 13. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Mm -hmm. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Read. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Read on. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. All right, because it says the key was his servants. Those who decide to keep God's commandments, he'll always um, make a way from us. What's that in Psalms? I've never seen a righteous begging for bread. 37, 25. All right, let's go there real quick. Psalms, you said 37? Yep, 37, right. 25. All right, just like the scripture says, no matter what the situation is, if you're keeping God's commandments, most high got you back. He'll take care of you. All right, let's read that. Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 25. Uh -huh. I have been young. And now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Or his seed begging bread. All right, just like it says, let's go to it. Sirach, was that, uh, 21? No, no, 29. The things you need, the cheap things. Yep, 20, 29, 21. Sirach, to the 29 and verse 21. Uh-huh. The chief thing for life is water and bread. And clothing and in health to come a shame. All right, those are the chief things. So if if you're righteous, right, the most high God is gonna make sure that you have those things. All right, we got some examples in the camp right now. Yeah. Some of our brothers is being afflicted, but the most high God is still making a way for them to have those chief things. Food, water, clothing, all right, so they can endure and make and actually make it through this captivity. Now did you have something? Yeah, I had a one of okay. them. I don't know if you're going to Zedekiah's bank No. All right. 
Uh, go to Jeremiah 37 and uh, read verse 17. Then we're going to jump down to 21. I, I'm going to give you an example in the Bible. Exactly what um, Officer Mazdai just said in the scripture said. He said he never seen the righteous begging for bread. He never seen the righteous begging for bread. Alright, um, who can tell me this is going on during the Babylonian captivity? What was going on in Jerusalem during the Babylonian captivity? Who can tell me? What, what happened to our, our homeland of Jerusalem? Um, the Babylonians came and laid siege to it. Right, so how was the food supply? Was it plenty, plentiful or was it uh, very, very, very little? Like, like I said, they blocked us from food and Right. So, was there a lot of food or a, a little bit of food? Very little. Now, we're going to read. Read that. Jeremiah 37, read 17. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 37, verse 17. Matter of fact, start at 15. Verse 15. Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah uh -huh. and smote him uh -huh. and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe. So, they put Jeremiah, as always, the scripture said they hate him that rebuke him in the gates. Read. For they had made that the prison mm -hmm. when Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon. They put him in the dungeon, read. And into the cabins. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah had remained there many days. He was in prison in the dungeon many days, read. Verse 17. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. For some reason, most I put the spirit on Zedekiah to bring him out, read. And the king asked him secretly in, the, in his house. And said, is there any word from the Lord? Because this man was righteous, the king sought. He sought counsel from this man. Secretly. He knew it out in the open. Read. And Jeremiah said, There is. Mm -hmm. For said he, Thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. <laughs> so he, he still told the truth. He said, Yeah, I got a word for you. You're going you to go into captivity. Jump down to verse 21. Even though he spoke the truth, look what happened. Look how the most I dealt with. Verse 21. Then Zedekiah the king commanded. No, he asked. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm, you, read, you read. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Then Zedekiah the king commanded The king commanded Read That they should commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison Uh huh And that they should give him daily piece of bread They should do what? Give him daily a piece of bread And what did he just tell that king? He just told the king that he's going into captivity That's the spirit that the Most High rose in When you take care of his business He'll take care of yours So don't be scared to speak the truth In the right context and in the right times Alright finish that Gave him daily a piece of bread out of the baker's street uh -huh. until all the bread in the city were spent. Read. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Giving you a prime example of even during a siege, when you're speaking the truth, the Most High still will make a way for you to be taken care of. All right, whether it's whether it's from us, or the Most High workers, you will be taken care of if you keep the command. All right, and we have lots of history, and I'm pretty sure the officer gonna bring it out. But that's one example that stick out for me. All right, from there, I wanted to touch, uh, go to Psalms 91 and 1 real quick. Going into, um, you know, that doing good. What will we, What must we do as servants of the Most High to get um, that treatment from our enemies, to get treated well in this captivity during our affliction? Let's read that. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 1. Uh-huh. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Of the, of the Almighty. Now, brothers, let me ask you a quick question. Think about um, when it's real hot outside, right? What do you, what do you, what do you look for? You looking for shade? Looking for shade, right? Look, the root word of shadow, she's looking for shade. So, when it says that, if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Brother uh, Solomon, give us some understanding of what that's talking about. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High Shit. Stand up, brother. They're saying, if you're keeping the Most High laws and commandments, that you're going to be okay. He's going to keep a covering over you to make sure you're fine. All right, where's that secret place at? The Word. The Word of God, exactly. Let's go to Psalms 119 and uh, 114. That's, that's exactly correct. Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 114. Uh-huh. Thou art my hiding place. Now, in Psalms 91, it said what? It said a secret. It said a secret place, right? Yeah, it said a secret place. So, read that again. Thou art my hiding place. Uh-huh. And my shield. Read. I hope in thy word. In thy what? In thy word. In thy word. So, brothers, 
if we want our enemies to treat us good, if we want the most high to continue to provide for us, what must we do? So what must we do? So Darrell, what must we do? Abide in, abide in the most high's word, meaning study. All right, stay in the, stay in the scriptures. All right, uh, drop that. Let's go to Psalms 105 real quick. Psalms 105, we'll start at verse uh, 12. Psalms chapter 105 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. So the Most High God reproved kings for Israel's sake. Read on. Say, touch not mine anointing. And do my prophets no harm. And do my prophets no harm. Just like the Zedekiah example that the officer brought out was a perfect example. All right? Yeah, we're going to go through afflictions and we're going to go through trials for the Most High in Christ. But the Most High God, he's going to be with us. All right? It says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now, will some of us have to die for, for the name of Christ? Yes. Let's go to um, Matthew 10 real quick. Even in that. Even in that, Matthew 10 and 28. Still, if God be for us, who can be against us? Even, even when um, we do have to be put to death, the Most High God is still for us because we have a reward. We have a promise. All right, at the end of the day, let's read that. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. Uh -huh. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. All right, even if they put us to affliction and actually put us to death, all right. We need to worry about our souls because that's something that man cannot touch. All right, that's between us and the Most High God. Let's read on. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. All right, that's what we should fear. All right, so if, if we are thinking about that constantly, we'll be all right. The Most High God to take care of us even in our life and death. All right, um, from there, let's go to the book of Psalms 56 and 9. Psalms chapter 56 and verse 9. All right, let's read that one. Psalms chapter 56 and verse 9. Uh -huh. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, but God is for me. But God is for us. All right, so if you're getting afflicted on your job, uh, your wicked family members, all right, go to the most high. Let your prayers be known. All right? The most I've got to straighten that thing out. But you must be doing what? You must be keeping God's commandments. You must be doing the will of the Father. Let's read that again. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. Uh -huh. This I know, for God is for me. Oh, let's read on. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. Read. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. That's putting on the whole armor of God like it says in Ephesians. All right, so how, how, do you, how are you able to build yourself up like that? Brothers, this is a question to you. I'm looking for a scripture. How are you able, and I don't want Ephesians, all right? How are you able to build yourself up? Uh, Brother Solomon, stand up. So Rock 21 and 11. Let's read it. It says, Sirach 21 and verse 11. Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth the law of the Lord giveth the understanding thereof. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Yeah, that's going into building up the understanding. That's a good one. I'm looking for something more along the lines of making you bold, all right? When you are studying God's laws, what's going to put on that whole armor? What's going to make you stand up for the most high God? All right, that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. That's a good precept. Um, anybody else got an idea? Uh, not you, uh, Brother Sandy. Continue with prayer, fasting. Uh, Jews, verse 20, it says, but ye be loved, building up yourselves. Let's read it. Let's go to it. Let's go. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. That's a good one, too. I like that one. Jude, chapter 1, verse 20. Mm -hmm. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most high, on your most holy faith, 
pray in the Holy Ghost. All right, all praises. That's that's a that's a perfect precept for that. To build yourself up. One more question to add on to that. Um, what goes into that? When you build yourself up, what goes into that? I need a scripture that shows the process. Uh, Brother Afia. 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy chapter 2.15. Study to show that self-approval. Let's go to Romans 10 and 17. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. All right, because the only way we're going to be able to build ourselves up and put on the armor of the Most High God, we got to know these scriptures, right? All right, that's going to build up our faith. Let's read that. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Uh huh. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So that's going to build up your faith, meaning that you have the faith in the Most High God, no matter what the situation is, there's an answer to it. All right? And that's going to build you up. you got to hear the word of God. You have to be taught. All right? Uh, was that 1 Corinthians 10, 13? The Most High God has not put us in any situation that we can't get out. But we have to build ourselves up in this in this book in order to call on him and guard ourselves up in a time of trouble. I got something. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 15, 33. Okay. The same way the officer just pulled out uh, uh, Romans 10, 17, uh, it says, uh, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Absolutely correct. The more you hear, the more you do it. Just like when you first come to the truth, you wake up, you watch camp video, you got the podcast in your ear, you get home, you watch the classroom, you study the precepts, your faith gets built up to such a level. On the flip side, say you come to the truth and it ain't fire to you. I'm show you what happens. First Corinthians 15, 33. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. Uh-huh. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Read. Evil communications uh -huh. corrupt good man. So the same way you can build yourself up with the scriptures and you get on that spiritual high where precepts just flowing in your brain, all you can do, everything you see, you relate it to the scriptures. That evil communications will deceive all of it and destroy it. So when you look at everything with a weird and crooked eye, nothing is pure to you. Everything is like, why am I even thinking that? Right. Why am I looking at that like that? You can jack yourself up like that. So make sure you know that the good is first evil. Good is set against evil. So that's why it's very important that you build yourself up the correct way with the scriptures. Uh, let's, go, let's go back to Psalms 105 and 15. Now we're going to go through an example of um, our forefathers being tried, all right, in the time of affliction. Let's read that. 15? Yeah. Psalms chapter 105 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Say, touch not mine anointing, and do my prophets no harm. And do the Most High's prophets no harm. Let's go to the book of Daniel, and uh, let's start at chapter 3, verse 12. All right, these are our forefathers, the three holy children. All right, this is a prime example of what it means when he says, touch not my anointed. Right. Familiar with this history? This is good history. This uh, definitely is a faith builder just to show some of the great works that, are, that our God has done for us. All right, let's read this. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 12. Uh -huh. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So what's going on right now is that these three Israelite men, all right, they decided not to bow down to the, uh, the Babylonian gods. All right, let's read on. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Read on. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach? Meshach and Abednego, do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Breathe. Now you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. So let's just paint the image. Let's relate it today, all right? So they had certain music that they paid homage to their gods. Think about the Pledge of Allegiance today, right? What what song goes off when the Pledge of... Wait, wait, what's it called? Uh, am I saying it right? Is it Star Spangled Banner. And everybody puts their hand over their chest. Now, if we was at a sporting event, right? All of us as a group. And that, the Star Spangled Banner came off. All of the Edomites, all of the other nations, they stood up. And Wicked Jake stood up with their hand over their chest, taking their hats off. What would we be doing? 
We be sitting down. This is, this is the same thing that's going on. We be sitting down. Why? Because this ain't our land. This ain't our country. We don't, we don't stand for and believe in the things that America stands for. We stand for righteousness. All right, so that's the same example. If you want to paint that picture in your head, that's what's going on right here. All right, let's read on. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So he said, if you don't, if you don't pay homage, all right, they were gonna they were gonna put them in a fire, all right. As we read on, we're gonna see they did just that. Read on. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? So now he's putting our God to the test. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh -huh. answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar. We are not careful to answer in this matter. Read. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Read. And he will deliver us out of, the, of thine hand, O king. Read. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So he said, hey, it doesn't matter what happens. We're not bowing down. We're not going to worship that God, all right? No matter what the situation, read. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. That's wickedness right there, read on. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Jump up to 23. Verse 23. Uh -huh. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? So he says, Did not we cast three men bound into the fire? Read. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. So they were sent down bound. They were in shackles. All right. The Most High God broke the shackles and allowed the fire to do what? No harm to them. Just like it said in Psalms 105. It says, it doesn't matter what the heathen tries to do. The topic of today's lesson is if God be for us, who could be against us? All right. Let's read verse 20. 20. 25 again. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fight. Uh -huh. And they have no hurt. No harm, read. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, that's that's for another topic. Alright? That's just that's just a um example of our forefathers. Alright? And that's another precept to show you that Christ is all throughout the Bible. Alright? Alright, let's go to um Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. So these are some scriptures that should um, be common knowledge to you that you deal with on a daily basis to keep you going throughout the day. You got something? All right, let's read that, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. The book of the law, this book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Then thou shalt have good success. All right? When your ways are pleasing to the Most High God, everything's taken care of. All right? Um, from there, let's go to Daniel 4 and 17. And this goes in um, in regards to the nations of why you may think um, certain brothers or sisters are in the positions that they're in, why your boss is like this, or why, the thing, the, why things are in the world that they, the way they are today, all right? Daniel 4 and 17 will sum it up. The Most High God, He controls it all, all right? Let's read that. Daniel, chapter 4 and verse 17. All right. This matter is by the decree of the watchers uh -huh. and the demand by the word of the holy to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruler in the kingdom of men. The Most High God rules in the kingdom of men. Uh, who can tell me what that means? Uh, Brother Alan I, stand up. All right, what does that mean? That goes into your uh, president, to where he sets up whoever he wants to be president. Right. Um, are we to get involved with that stuff? No, sir. Why is that? 
uh, because that's, that's like partaking in, into uh, in Revelation 18 and 4. That's partaking into uh, um, the world. The Things of the world, right. Exactly. Uh, was that 2 Timothy 2 4? Yep. Um, no man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this world. All right, let's read it all the way through again, also. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holies to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruler in the kingdom of men uh -huh. and give it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the faces of men. The faces of men. And uh, according to the uh, book of Job, Esau is the basis of men. Hold on, what is that? Uh, Job 32? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I'm going to get that real quick. Yeah. Job 32. Let me see. All right. So exactly what the author is saying. Y'all got to understand. These, these white men that be dressed in suits that we think are all great or whatnot, God says they are base men. Now don't 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 get me wrong. It also says uh, that Esau is wiser than, than Satan. All right, but for the most part, the leaders of their people, the leaders of the people, that base men. When you get to know your boss, when you get to know, you like how does this person get it? I give an example. I work in the school system. When I see some principals and administrators, I'm like, man, how you get to make six figures? Sheesh. But that's what it is. You got it? Yep. Uh -huh. Job thirty and three. Job 30 and 3. I gotta understand Esau, the Edomites, the so-called Caucasians today, yeah, they've always been a base nation. And this, today's society makes Daniel 4 and 17 come together full circle. Alright, because of our sins, he said, alright, not only am I gonna set another nation upon you, now I'm gonna set the basis nation, and they're gonna rule the whole earth. Watch this. Job chapter 30 and verse 3. Uh-huh. For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste. This is Esau, fleeing into the wilderness. All right, they uh, dwelt in Mount Seir. Read that. Who cut up mallows by the bushes uh -huh. and juniper roots for their meat. So that's how, that's what they did. They were cavemen. They were savages. All right, read on. They were driven forth from among men. Uh -huh. They cried after them as after a thief. All right, they were driven away. Nobody wanted Esau around. Read. To dwell in the cliffs of the valley. To do what? To dwell in the cliffs of the valley. Read. In the caves of the earth. And in rocks. And in rocks. These are the cavemen. These are the Neanderthals that we learn about. They say that we come from monkeys and they evolved. No, no, that's that's Esau's history to be playing with those monkeys yep. in the caves. This is this is them in the Bible. They're the base men. All right, read on. Among the bushes they break. Uh huh. Under the nettles, nettles they were gathered together. Read. They were children of fools. Oh, what? Children of fools. Of fools. Read. Yay. Children of base men. Children of base men. There goes the, the white man today, right here in the Bible. But they don't want you to know about their history. They want to assimilate, and that, no, not assimilate, but take over everybody's history because now they're um, they're the Africans, they're the Israelites, they're everybody according to them. They're the original Greeks. No, they're, they're not the original Greeks. All right, that's the seed of Japheth. So you have to understand. Esau is the basest kingdom on the face of the earth, but because of the sins of Israel, who's ruling? Esau's ruling, right? That brings uh, the scripture to life, all right? From there, let's go to uh, the book of Job, chapter 12, and uh, let me look at it. 22. Yes. Job, chapter 12, and verse 23. Uh huh. He increases the nations and destroys them, he enlarges the nations. And straighten them again. The Most High God does this. He's He is in control. Uh, read on. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth. Mm -hmm. And causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. All right. From there, let's go to um, First Ezra 8 and 3. This is an example of our forefather Ezra. All right. Even in the time of affliction, once again, in captivity, his ways were pleasing to the Most High God. And here's a perfect example. Let's read that. First Ezra 8 and 3. First Ezra chapter 8 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Let's start at verse 1. I'm sorry. Let's start at verse 1. 
And after these things, when Artaxerxes, the king of the Persians, reigned, King Ezra, the son of Cyrus, the son of Ezariah, the son of Hel Helka, the son of Salome, the son of Sadat, the son of Agatol, the son of Amariah, the son of Menorah, the son of Zariah, the son of Sabias, the son of Bocas, the son of Abyssin, the son of Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. Really? This Ezra went up from Babylon as a scribe, being very ready in the law of Moses that was given by the God of Israel. So, just like the theme of the class, Ezra being ready in the laws of God means what, brothers? He was studying, he was studying right? He was in the uh, secret place of the Most High. Read. And the king did him on. And the king did what? And the king did him on. So what did the scripture say? If a man's ways is pleasing to the Lord, even what? And even his enemies will have to entreat him. They will have to do him good. Let's read that verse again. And the king did him honor. Uh -huh. But he found grace in his sight in all his requests. In all of his requests. So no matter what it was, he was taken care of. Read on. Verse 5. No, I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. Drop that. All right. Let's, from there, let's go to Proverbs 21 and 1. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So y'all see, y'all see this? It's precept after precept after precept showing you who is in control when it's all said and done. Alright? So if you wonder why you get treated a certain way, alright, more more than usual, you need to do what? Instead of blaming Esau, who you need to blame? Yourself. Yourself. Because you know that the most high God. He controls it. He controls all of it. The reason why our people are getting done now is because why? They're living in sin. They are living in sin. Let's get that. Uh, was it Psalm 17? 13? Yeah, the sword. Psalm 17, 13. All right. That's that's for the wicked Israelites because they don't want to do what God says. Read. Psalm chapter 17 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. Which is thy sword. Deliver thy soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Knowing that if we do wrong, if the other the other nations will be there to chastise us. And that's chastisement from the Lord. Alright? Uh, from there, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. Alright, got some reading to do with this chapter. This is going to go through, you know, before we go there, go to Sirach 2 and 10. Sirach 2 and 10. Alright, we went through a few examples so far, but we're going to touch a few more. Sirach to the 2 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? So it's saying, when the time of trouble came, did any of our forefathers who kept God's commandments, when they cried out to the Most High, did the Most High God forsake any of them? That's the question that's posed. Read on. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Uh -huh. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? None. The answer is zero. The answer is, is none. Not none at all. All right. We're gonna go through a few of those and wisdom of Saul. Yes, uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter six and verse thirty-three. Okay. All right. Matthew six and thirty-three. Exactly what the author is saying. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's why I know it's hard. A lot of brothers and sisters' uh, jobs. Uh, when you come and try to get a job or whatnot, be like, okay, be like, hey, I ain't had a job since so They say I got to work on the Sabbath. Don't take the job. In a carnal mindset, you're saying, brother, I got this to take and that to care. I'm to tell you, don't take the job. Be why? Because guess what? Is the most I going to take care of you? Yes. Do you have examples of that written in the scriptures? Yes. It's written. Romans 15 and 4 is so important. It says, the things written for time are written for what? For our learning. So we can learn from the examples of our forefathers. All right, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Uh-huh. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. The first objective must be the kingdom of God. Read. And his righteousness. Uh -huh. And all these things shall be added unto you. you. See that? The most I will add everything unto you once you put him first. Because once God is with you, who can be against you? Exactly what the officer just been bringing out all day. But we got to make sure our priorities are in order. Then the most I have his priorities in order. Because right now, he only worried about jacking us up. 
But when that's when that when that switches, he only gonna be worried about jacking up the other nigga. That's why we gotta make sure we get those priorities straight. What are we doing? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. Uh, like we read in Sirach, which one of our forefathers did most have forsake? All right. The answer is, is zero. We're going to go through a few, a few of those examples right now. Start at verse um, 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For who is called the earth being drowned with the flood? Wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. Brother Demarius, what is that talking about? Stand up and tell everybody what that's talking about. Read it again for uh, an officer. For who is called the earth being drowned with the flood? Wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. Mm -hmm. What's that talking about, brother? Do you know? All right, so take a seat. Brother Afi, uh, what's that? What do, you, what do you think that's talking about? Let's talk about Noah. Exactly, that's talking about Noah. Um, now, Brother Samuel, stand up and let us know why did the Most High God preserve Noah and his family? He preserved Noah and his family because they were they keeping the laws of the Most High God. They were keeping the laws of the Most High God. Exactly. All right, you can take a seat, brother. Read on. Verse 5. Moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto God and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. All right, so this one may be a little bit harder. Who, who, who knows what that's going into? It says tender compassion toward his son. What is that going into? Think about it. Think about the history. Think about the history. That's why we have y'all always read uh, between Genesis and Deuteronomy over and over again. All right, I'll read it again. It says, moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteousness. Talking about wisdom. That's what it, when it says she. That's what it's going into, okay? Referring to the Mosai. It says, and preserved him blameless unto God and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. No, it's not talking about Joseph. What you got? No. That's talking about Abraham and his son Isaac. All right, when he was being tried of the Lord. Because what was his what was his trial? Who knows? What was his trial with his son Isaac? Who can, who can tell us? Stand up. Who got it? What that feel? Stand up. Um, he was testing. He was supposed to. Um Kill Isaac, but he didn't kill Isaac. Well, he, the because the Most High stopped him. Exactly. So that's what that's going into. Because why? He was obedient to God, the Most High God. You know what? Since you're being obedient, we're gonna, I'm going to spare his life. Y'all see that? So if God be for you, who could be against you? All the Most High wants is obedience to his laws. All right? Read on, officer. Verse 6. When the ungodly perish, she delivered the righteous man who fled from the fire which fell down, down upon five cities. Fled from the fire that fell down upon the five cities. Now which one of our forefathers is this going into? Lot, exactly. Sodom and Gomorrah, exactly. Uh, let's read on. Of those wickedness, even to this day, the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness. And a strange and a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. Of an unbelieving soul, Lot's wife. Exactly. That's, that's the example for not trusting in God. You see Lot's example of righteousness, then you see his wife's example. Nah, she, she got changed to a pillar of salt because she did not please the Most High God. So he was what? He was not for her. All right, we're done. For regarding our wisdom, they got not only this hurt, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness. Of their sin, read on. So that in the things wherein they were they offended, they could not so much as be hid. Read on. But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. Read. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath. All right, so this one says when the righteous fled from his brother's wrath. Read. 
She guided him in right path uh -huh. and showed him the kingdom of God and gave him knowledge of holy things and made him rich in his travails and multiplied the fruit of his labors. All right, what is what y'all think this one is going into? Y'all said Jacob. All right, let's read on. In the covetousness of such as oppressed him, she stood by him and made him rich. She defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait. And in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory that he might know that godliness is stronger than all. So you said Jacob. Why did you say Jacob? Because um, uh, Jacob, Esau got mad because Jacob tripped him twice. So Esau was coming back. He heard, she heard Esau go plan on killing him or whatever because he was pissed off at that. So sorry, he was mad. So uh, Rebecca went to Jacob and told him to flee to go somewhere else until his brother's wrath uh, madness came to calm down. Correct. That is correct. All right, let's read on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. When the righteous was sold, she forsook him not, but delivered him from sin. She went down with him into the pit. All right, this one, verse 13 says, when the righteous was sold, she forsook him not. All right, just like the topic today and the theme all throughout the scriptures. When the righteous was sold, she forsook him not, but delivered him from his sin. From sin she went down with him into the pit. Which one of our forefathers is this going into, Brother Saul? Joseph. Our forefather Joseph, exactly. What happened? Stand up and tell the... Tell the class what happened in the history. Um, his brothers end up with what they were jealous of him, and they end up selling them to the Israelites, and the Israelites end up selling them to the Africans, and they, and they put them in jail. All right. Um. Yes, that is correct. That just summing it up. Let's go to Isaiah 26 and 3. We can close on this one. They're sending up the prayers, so we gotta gotta get in that. Isaiah 26 and 3. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Uh huh. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So the Most High God, he'll take care of you as long as you focus on his work. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.